In this video, we're going to write a function in C that checks whether a number is an Armstrong number. So an Armstrong number is a number that is the sum of its own digits raised to the power of the number of digits. So in other words, the number 371 here has three digits, three, seven, and one. If we take each digit and we raise it to the power of three, we get three to the power of three is 27, seven to the power of three is 343, and one to the power of three is one. If we then sum those numbers together, we get 371, the original number back. So we would call this an Armstrong number. And we're gonna write a function in C to detect whether a number is an Armstrong number. So the function is gonna return true if we do have an Armstrong number and false if we don't. So I'm gonna include stdbool.h. Just that way I can use the Boolean variable type. I'm also gonna include math.h so I can use the power function. So the function will look like this. We'll say bool is Armstrong, and it's gonna accept a number as an argument. And the function is gonna return true if the number is an Armstrong number and false otherwise. We'll provide a definition of the function down here. The first thing we're gonna to have to do is figure out how many digits are in the number, and we'll store that into total digits. So to figure this out, we're gonna actually have to manipulate the number a bit. So I'll actually create a separate variable called digits left to store a copy of the number. And what we're gonna do is keep on eliminating a digit from digits left until we've counted all the digits in the number in the total digits variable. So it'll look like this. We'll say while digits left doesn't equal zero, then total digits can be incremented by one and digits left, we're gonna divide by 10. So this loop is actually gonna count the number of digits in the number. And the way it works is like this. Initially, the number is gonna be 371, and we're storing that number into digits left. So in the first iteration of the loop, we're gonna increment total digits by one, and we're gonna count the first digit. Then we're gonna divide digits left by 10, which in the case of 371 is gonna give us 37. And that result is gonna be stored back into digits left. So this here basically eliminates one digit at a time. Because if we continue this process now, the loop is gonna run again because digits left doesn't equal zero yet. We would increment total digits to count the second digit, and we would divide 37 by 10 this time and store the result into digits left. And we would be left with three. Now again, digits left doesn't equal zero yet, but this time we increment total digits by one, and we're counting this last digit now. And then we would divide three by 10 and digits left would now be zero. And now the loop would stop and total digits would be set to three. So that's how that code works in terms of counting the number of digits in our number. So next what we need to do is take each digit in the number, raise it to the power of total digits, sum the result of all of that and check to see if it equals the original number. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a variable to store each digit because we're gonna extract them one at a time. So I'll say here int digit is equal to zero. We'll also create a variable called total to store the sum total of raising all of these digits to the power of the total number of digits. And we'll create a variable called number left and we're gonna set it equal to the number because again, similar to what we did here, we're gonna have to manipulate the number and basically extract each digit one at a time. So here I'll say, while number left doesn't equal zero. And then in here, I'll say digit is equal to number left modulus 10 total plus equals pow digit and total digits. And then number left divide equals 10. So this logic here with number left being continually divided by 10, this is exactly the same as what we just described up here with digits left being divided by 10 each time. So number left is playing the same role in terms of keeping track of the digits in the number that are remaining to be looked at. And what we're doing this time is we're looking at the number one digit at a time and we're actually extracting that digit each time. Because here, when I set digit equal to number left modulus 10, the modulus operator 
returns the remainder of a division operation. So again, if we had the number 371, we know that this loop is going to iterate three times because we know that number left is going to continually be divided by 10 and that that's going to have this loop iterate three times because we're going to get first 37 and then three and then zero. So with digit here, what we're doing is we're taking number left and we're doing modulus 10. Well, the first time through the loop, when we have 371, the remainder of dividing by 10 is going to be one, right? Because 371 and we do a divide by 10, the remainder of that will be one. Then the next time through the loop, we're going to be left with 37. When we do 37 modulus 10, the remainder of that is seven. And then the next time through the loop, when we have three left and we do three modulus 10, it's going to have a remainder of three. So digit is going to be set to each digit in the number one at a time by using this modulus operator. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take that digit and we're going to use the pow function that's defined in the math.h library. And we're going to raise that digit to the power of total digits. And we're going to add that to the total. So by the end of this loop here, total is going to store the sum of each digit raised to the power of the number of digits in the number. And that's what we wanted. Now, the last thing to do is to check whether that total is equal to our number. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to return the result of that check. Because if the total is equal to the number, then we want to return true. If the total doesn't equal the number, we want to return false. So I'm actually going to return the result of this expression here, of this check. So return whether or not the total equals the number. Because if it is the case that the total equals the number, we want to return true. Otherwise, we want to return false. Let's actually test this function out now. Up here, I'll say if is Armstrong, and we'll pass in 371. Then we'll do a printf, and we'll say 371 is an Armstrong number. Otherwise, if it's not, we'll printf and we'll say 371 is not an Armstrong number. So if we save this here and run it, we definitely expect to get that 371 is an Armstrong number. And that's exactly what we get here. We get that 371 is an Armstrong number. We could do something pretty fun with this function. We could call this function for every number between, let's say, 0 and maybe go up to 10,000. So here I'll make a loop with a counter variable i. I'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than or equal to 10,000, i plus plus. And I'm gonna call the function with every number. So I'll say here if is Armstrong i, then we're gonna print out the number. So we'll say printf percent d slash n i to print them out on new lines. So we should get a printout here, separated on new lines, every number between 0 and 10,000 that is an Armstrong number. So I'll save this and run it, and we get a printout here of the Armstrong numbers between 0 and 10,000. And so we've written a function in C that can identify whether a number is an Armstrong number or not. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.